Hi, and welcome to Marketing Optimization with Alex Designs. I am your host, Alex Harris, and today we are talking to Michael Agard in Denmark. How are you doing, Michael? I'm doing really well, man. Thanks for having me. Awesome. Michael is a self-employed, self-confessed test split test junkie. He's a copywriting fanatic, and he's obsessed with finding out what really works in online marketing. And he's going to tell us that today by talking about content, copy, and conversion. Michael, to get started, I'd like to ask, what is your definition of optimization and why is it beneficial? Uh, that's a really good question and a super interesting question also, and I've never been asked that before. So uh, yeah, it's, it's actually, uh, I'm pretty happy you asked it because <laughs> it makes me th think more about what it is I do actually. And, and I guess uh, there's got to be a million different definitions uh, depending on who you ask. And I'd also say that there's a lot of different kind of subcategories of optimization, but I think what I do is, is all about you know getting more people to do what you want them to do once they get to your website. You know, so it's kind of the process of, of after you know you get traffic. How do you make them do what you want them to do? And in in my experience, that's all about <clears throat> you know uh, uh, arranging you know the content on your website in such a way that it's uh, easy for um, you know your potential customers to get the answers they need and uh, get the info they need and the experience overall experience they need in order to be able to do whatever it is you want them to do so kind of uh, really what we're doing is not so much optimizing websites really but we're optimizing actually decision making processes we're trying to make more people say yes and of course that's beneficial because then we can on an e-commerce platform, we can make more money. If we're talking about a non-profit organization, the Red Cross that I've worked with, for example, then it could be about getting more people to donate some money to a, to a charity cause. Uh, so uh, uh, I think some, sometimes when I talk about what I do, people quickly assume that we're into all this dark, you know, dark stuff, you know, the dark side of the force, and we're trying to, you know, manipulate people and trick them into doing stuff. And that's not at all what it's about. And, uh, I don't think it's really... It's really about you know actually uh, trying to give your uh, target audience a better experience and actually be very very upfront about what what you're doing and what you want them to do. That's a really interesting perspective. And let's move on to talking about two things. Before people arrive at your site, that mindset that you have to create to figure out how you turn your prospects into customers, and then when they arrive at your site, what have you seen when figuring out how to determine how to change people's mindset to affect them from turning them into a, from a prospect into a customer? Well, there are many different ways of doing it. I'd say, I mean, for example, the way I, I kind of personally is, is via content, you know, via my blog, and I try to put content out there, and you know, I try to give a lot away for free, you know, share tons of case studies, and be very, very open. See, so this is what it, what it was like before. Here's the treatment. Here's the result. This one. I mean, I'm very open about. It. I always when I do. Um, presentations and stuff, I always have four or five case studies that took completely backfired where I was wrong, you know, try to give people the right impression that, you know, it's not magic and it's not, you know, just because you're split testing doesn't mean that all of a sudden, you know, you're going to make tons of money, you know, there's, there's a process behind it. So that I kind of went off on a tangent there. What I was trying to say is that one way of doing it is bringing them in with content, you know, where you get people to say, wow, this is really interesting. And then maybe down the line, they'll be like, well, we can hire this guy. So that's a way of kind of changing, uh, you know, a mindset. Another way is to, um, you know, to, to uh, be able to, to, to express, you know, your, the value or whatever it is, is you're offering uh, in, a, in a clearer and better way than your competitors, you know, maybe answer questions that they're not answering that are top of mind for, for, for the, you know, your target audience. And yet another way is to make sure that whatever, that there's kind of a, there's a, a consistency in the conversion funnel. I mean, for example, if, if you get traffic from a banner or from a PPC ad or whatever, that you know, you, you keep reassuring people that they're on the right way. And that's one of the things I often see is that you know, there's there's a disconnect, or maybe it's you know, you it's too creative, so you you have a weird messaging on a banner and people click it, and and just because it's weird, and when they land on the landing page, they're like, oh, okay, so they're trying to sell me wallpaper. I don't care about wallpaper. <laughs> Um, yeah, so I think it's, it's all about you know giving people the right expectations and then really living up to those expectations when once they get to your website. Right. If we oversimplify things a lot. <laughs> uh, in your content, you all talk. You also talk about figuring out 
you know, understand your customer's behaviors to really understand how to redesign their site or how to optimize their site. What steps are you taking to determine those biggest challenges to increase the, that uh, website's conversion? Well, it really depends on, 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 the, on, the, uh, on the specific case. And I think well, one thing that I find interesting uh, as an approach is, is to not just jump straight for the kind of, we need to burn this website and build it from the bottom again, but kind of spend some time actually going, hmm, well, maybe there's smaller things we can work with. And maybe by doing kind of micro-optimization, we can, we can learn more about our, 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 our potential customers and, and kind of what they need in order to make the right decision. So maybe instead of doing a radical redesign, you could start with, uh, for example, some campaign landing pages that get a bunch of traffic, and then you could start maybe <coughs> experimenting, uh, for example, with messaging there. Or um, you, sometimes, you know, if you get a new client, there might be something that's obviously uh, way, <laughs> way wrong, you know, from, from an experience standpoint. And then you go, well, there are a couple of low-hanging fruits here. For example, you know, it's impossible to uh, understand what it is you're talking about here, or, you know, it's impossible to find out what the next step is, or there's this crucial bit of information that you're not stating anywhere, you know. Small things like that you might be able to change. In other cases, you know, you have to really, really dig deep, maybe from the beginning, and, and uh, you know, do user tests and interviews with, with uh, current um, uh, customers. You've got to dig deep in analytics and so on. But I think it's really all about finding out, you know, what is the right approach right here? And are there any low-hanging fruits we can start by picking? And, uh, and um, how, uh, how difficult or easy is it to kind of, you know, move the needle or to make people go in this direction instead of that one? And in some cases, you know, it's very easy and in other cases uh, even though the website is horrible uh, motivation might be so high from the visitors uh, you know coming to the website that it really doesn't matter that much whether you have this or that layout because the people have already made up their minds I've seen that with some charity uh, work I've done or with um, for example Red Cross that in some cases the um, the, 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 the cause is so compelling that you can change the complete layout and the messaging and everything and it doesn't really make a difference. It seems that people have made up their minds. So it's, yep. it's really all about figuring out kind of the, the right uh, angle of attack, I think. Yeah, and you talk about that in your free ebook, The Seven Universal Conversion Optimization Principles. And there's some really great content, and I'll link to that, uh, that free okay. ebook in the, in, the, in the show notes. And you talk about it's all about optimizing decisions, not mm -hmm. web pages. Mm -hmm. Do you want to take us through some of those principles in that ebook? Yeah, sure. I mean, I, the, the, I think that's a, that's an important uh, principle, and it's it's built on on stuff I've learned from uh, Dr. Flint McLaughlin from uh, Mech Labs. Uh, he has kind of a different angle on it, but I think it's I think you know the basic thing here is that there's a ten. I've been super guilty. Uh, first of all, I want to say I've made all the mistakes you can make, pretty much, or not all of them. There's tons of mistakes that I will still make, you know, for a long time. But I've made a lot of mistakes when it comes to optimization. I've learned from those mistakes. One of the main things is that I. And, and I, th I think a lot of other people do this as well, is that there's a tendency for you to sit down and look at a page and say, how do we make this page better? Or how do we make it look nicer? Or how do we make it look more contemporary? Or whatever. And then you start doing that, and then you, know, you, as you assume that it's going to be better. And when you test it, it really wasn't that much better. And I think what happens there is that you focus on the wrong thing, because you really need to focus on what, what is the goal of this page? What are we trying to make people do? What do we need? To you know, put in front of them both you know, uh, content-wise, messaging, uh, uh, layout-wise, and everything design-wise, in order to make them make the right decision. So, in some cases, uh, you could opt for you know uh, doing a radical redesign on the page, but in other cases, you say, well, there's no clear value proposition here. It's, it's impossible to understand what the page is about. Maybe if we just tweak that one thing, we can get a lift. I mean, I, I have some uh, case studies where just you know. Changing uh, the privacy policy on on a, on a sign up form has has increased conversions by, you know, uh, almost thirty percent. Vice versa. I've also another case where actually putting <laughs> the wrong privacy policy on a form decreased conversion by I think it was around eighteen percent. So you know, small tweaks like that uh, can have a big effect. So start by identifying those. Um, you know, and think about the decision uh, that you want people to make. Um, yeah, and I think. There's a tendency also to, to assume that you know, the biggest change 
will facilitate the biggest lift, which is another principle I talk about. And that's, in, in my experience, also dangerous because then you go like, well, of course, the more we change, you know, the, the, the bigger effect we'll have. Well, it's all about changing the right stuff, you know, not making a lot of changes, but making the right changes. And in some cases, the right changes is to, are to, you know, kill the landing page of the website and build it from the bottom. But in other cases, it might not be. Yeah, uh, and you talk about that in your principle number five when asking for the right action at the right time. And, you know, that's that takes into account figuring out where they are in the buying process, yeah. where they are in the in the in the funnel process, the high part of the funnel or low part of the funnel and, and where they are in their buying decisions. Yeah. And and in this ebook you have some really great case studies. There's there's a ton of them in there. Um so so definitely a lot of value to check out. Let's let's take a look at one of those examples uh from the uh seven universal conversion optimization principles. Yep. So uh, this was the one with the sign-up form, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I mean, this is a ridiculously simple case study, but I think it really uh, 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 illustrates you know, one of my, some of my points very well. So this is just a simple, simple case study where you know, all we really did was, uh, on, this, is, this is an example from a, a, like a, a bidding form, a bidding website. It's, it's free to sign up and you become part of this community and you can share your knowledge, you know, you can learn from these really experienced tipsters out there. And so on the, on the main page, you know, there's, if, I can't show the main page right now, but, you know, I, I use this example uh, presentations a lot. And so if you ask people, what should we change on this page, you know, you, you get as many different, you know, ideas as, as people you ask. And, and most of them would go like, well, the page is terrible, it looks uh, stupid, uh, you should change this, you should change that. I said, yeah, all great suggestions, but... If, if, if we step back for a second and say, what is it we want people to do? What is that? Well, we want them to fill out the form. We say, well, well maybe you should start working with the form then. And so just a quick analysis here is that you, you look at the form and you say, okay, so from, uh, from a design or from a usability perspective, there's nothing wrong with it. You know, it says join betting expert and the button says sign up. So it's, it's hard to misunderstand. But what is totally lacking here is actually a good reason to sign up, you know, and in my book, just an order to join, that's not a reason <laughs> at all. <laughs> and it's almost like marketers assume, you know, that customers are just, I mean, they get up in the morning all excited about, you know, signing up for free newsletters and clicking banners and clicking buttons. They just love it. I mean, I've never, I've never met a person who felt that way. I personally don't feel that way. But um, so what we did here was actually just to, to you know, to put a headline on that actually tells you what you're going to get in return for, you know, uh, for filling out the form. So there's, there's another way of thinking of it is actually that there's a transaction taking place. You're not paying with money, but you're paying with sensitive information. And so what am I going to get in return for giving you my sensitive information? Well, in this case, you're going to get free betting tips. And that's kind of the, the main, most tangible uh, benefit of signing up for this form. So it's a really, really simple example of, of actually, you know, giving people a good reason to do whatever it is you want them to do instead of just telling them to do it. Yeah, Clearly, making it direct, giving them something of value in return for for filling that form is is what you're doing there, because you're starting with join on the other one, and that's essentially a negative word. You're you're asking them to commit before they even essentially know what they're getting. Yeah, exactly. And also, I mean, so yeah, just I mean, you can see on the screenshot, but this was a lift of uh, you know thirty one point fifty four percent. So that's that's pretty heavy. I mean, I've done a lot of radical redesigns that have been nowhere close to getting a result like this. So this is a good example of optimizing. A very small change, but it's a change that is applied strategically to a mission critical element on the page. So, and for example, with with, with a page like this, uh, it's you know it's safe to assume that people are are have probably looked at other betting forums also. They might have ten different you know tabs open. So you know they scan the page quickly and see. So oh, okay, well what do I have to do here? I have to sign up. Mm. And, and, you know, just in that second, they hone in on that element. And then there's a big difference between just saying join or actually saying, hey, you get free betting tips. So I think when you talk about like online, offline behavior, I think one of the main things that you have to remember often is that on the Internet, uh, I, I know this from my own behavior and uh, from a lot of other people I've talked to, is that it, often you're looking for answers, you know. I mean, you're comparing different, different uh, uh, options and solutions. You're trying to fit, find the one that fits you best. And, you know, it's... In a lot of cases, it takes you just split seconds to, to decide, uh, uh, you know, whether or not you it's, it's the right thing for you. So, so small tweaks like this can make a big difference. Yeah, absolutely. And and not trusting your gut, testing what you figure out, you know, what you think is. Oh good. yeah. 
what hypothesis oh you, do you think could could work and then testing them and that just yeah going with your gut principle number seven yeah i think that's one of the really really cool things also about you know testing and stuff is that it kind of forces you to be humble yeah oh, it de depends on your your angle on it but i think that it forces you to be humble because i mean i've had i mean i've had you know, i've had happened to me so many times where like you're fully confident that pff, i'm gonna you know i'm gonna knock it out of the park on this one it's crazy all i have to do is just put that it's so obvious and then you go oh my god conversions went down yeah uh <laughs> and it's yeah so so you're constantly forcing yourself to actually you know uh, yeah it, better it, it's you it, it's really great to to interview all you know all different people on conversion or different aspects of, of optimization because majority of everyone i've talked to 80 percent of everything that they test loses mm -hmm. you know so you know, you're going to learn something on basically every test that you do because you go into it anticipating that it may lose or may win, yeah. but you probably learn more from your your losses than your wins. I mean, as long as you have you have a, a clear hypothesis and you know why you're testing and what and, and you know what you're trying to achieve, you can get some great learnings. I mean, I I wrote a, a guest post uh, on Unbounce.com uh, recently about actually you know kind of you know what do you do with negative test results and how they can actually help you improve conversions. So I've had that happen a couple of times with, for example, uh, just a privacy policy that completely backfired. But that and and so you know you you could perceive that one test as a completely failed test because like the worst thing that can happen when you do a split test is that you get a, a negative test result. But that one test, for example, kind of made me understand that wow, you can't just throwing a privacy policy on there. You know, you would assume that would make it better, but it doesn't. So maybe there's something about the words you choose in the privacy policy which made me led me on to more uh, hypotheses and and and. Uh, those are some really great examples. Let's talk about content verve. What are you guys doing, and um, what do you, what plans uh, and great content do you have coming out in the future? Well, I'm gonna I'm definitely gonna keep posting a lot of case studies, and I'm you know I'm, I'm constantly trying to find out kind of what people would like to, to, to read, you know, what they'd like to learn more about. So um, if, 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 if any of the, the viewers or listeners now have any suggestions, please uh, feel free to send me an email because I'd love to uh, learn more about what you <laughs> what you'd like to learn about. Um, I, I, it's it's uh, content verb is just pretty much just me. So one of the difficult things is is, is keeping up, you know, um, <laughs> simply keeping up because there's a lot of other stuff. You know, I I speak at a lot of events and I, I do a lot of you know naturally a lot of client work. So just finding time to also write blog posts can be be difficult. So that's one of the things I really want to get better at is is keeping a tighter schedule and actually putting out more content. Um, but other than that, I mean, um, uh, as as, as uh, I have some interesting kind of uh, collaborations coming up with other uh, conversion people out there. I'm really looking forward to that because uh, I'm kind of usually the only kind of conversion guy, and I work, you know, when I work with uh, with clients. But it would be great to, to to mingle and do some more stuff with other geeks. You know, where you, <laughs> you can sit around the table, you know, and come up with great ideas, uh, uh, and 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 hopefully, uh, you know, some really really good solutions. Um, Awesome. Yeah. When, so when when you partner and and put together some products or content, uh, let me bring you back on and talk about some of that stuff that you guys are, have creating. Yeah, that would be cool. Uh, another thing I'm considering is uh, actually doing uh, because I'm based in Denmark, you know, and and uh, content verb is kind of international. I'm I'm thinking of doing more, uh, for example, uh, Skype uh, consultation because. Uh, here in Denmark and Scandinavia, I've I've been doing like a, a lot of workshops and training with companies because I I get the feeling that a lot of companies out there they kind of feel a little bit pressured you know when an agency approaches them and, and they kind of like they feel a little bit like they're under attack because like you know, they bring in five uh, consultants you know, we need to do this we need to do that you know a two-year retainer and a ridiculously high amount and, and some some of the clients don't really understand the process and like so there's there's I see a large need out there for you know uh, businesses to learn more about uh, optimization you know yeah. just the basic principles also that will, that will Put them in a position to be more critical when when an agency approaches them. So uh, yeah, I've been doing a lot of workshops. Uh, companies where kind of sit down and spend time just going through the website and finding low hanging fruits, and they you know ask a lot of questions. I give them you know feedback and stuff. So I uh, think about doing that via Skype online also for um, you know international crowd out there. And um, uh, very yeah, cool. Thank you. Let's uh, let's close by telling people how they can get in touch with you. 
Well, uh, through uh, contentverve.com, for example, uh, I've, you know you can follow me on Twitter or Google Plus. Um, yeah, there's the um, you can shoot me an email or you know contact me via via one of the uh, social media platforms, and I'll be happy to uh, chat or <laughs> take requests for for content. So yeah, awesome. Thank you, Michael. Thanks for your time. Thank you, man. 